Willem wants an orchard to look at while he works the kitchen. William wants to preside over a great library. Clement wants to stop existential dread from ruining his life by making him feel empty inside. And I want to give these little guys more of what they want in life. We're going to expand on the finished core of the village by undertaking a few ambitious building projects, including a new residential district, a revamp of our defenses, and updating the aesthetics of the place. The first grand construction starts here. Two clay walls. Perfect. Done. Nothing else to do here. I mean, I guess it can get a huge room, too. I'll break up the walls with some windows and doors so it looks better. Avoda hits level 20 in construction while working on it. That means that she can go ahead and build an advanced research table in the second story of our library, which will eventually be a forbidden section. Every good fantasy library needs a few books with secrets too deadly or important for anyone that isn't a scholar. Or at least, that's what William insists on. For now, I'll go ahead and unlock tables and banners instead of weapons of war. They aren't quite as forbidden, but they're very important for the Great Hall to be. Villagers will eventually eat their meals here, and they deserve the best. I mean, the bare minimum for the best right now, but this will still give them some good mood buffs when they use it. It also marks the start of the residential district. Once that's done, I can start putting in my next construction project. I'm not going to say what it is just yet, but I will say that I'm winging this whole thing, and that it should look super cool. I think. Eventually. Some bandits attack, Avoda rushes a door into place, and we slaughter them. Almost to the last, too. More bodies to lug away, and more gear our crafters can recycle to train. In the wake of this attack, the high tier research bench goes in. We are fairly safe right now, but our outgoing damage is pretty low with only short bows in our hands. A little more planning goes into this mystery project, but that's all for now. I'm honestly only using this placement to measure out the space that this will take so that I can start placing the next project. These will ultimately be bedrooms, and after keeping everyone cramped up in a tiny, barely adequate room, I think they deserve a little bit of extra space and some furnishings. They also need a gigantic wall near the front of the base that will eventually be the core of our defenses. The old, empty chicken pen gets cleared out to make room for a path to this wall, marking the long central road in our village. The first red currants are done, which will eventually make- Oh, the apples are done! That's way better! Willem will love to hear about it tomorrow morning, even though we're not nearly ready to start making sweets instead of staples. I'm skipping over a lot of work between these clips. It's actually already been half a season since the video started. Settlers are training their crafting skills in the morning, and then building, hauling, and harvesting in the rest of the day. The front gets a few stairs up to a new level planned out, and after that, we unlock the highest tiers of armor. All that training Clement's done can finally start paying off, as he starts on his first Great Helms. Each of these is going to take most of a day, but they should be worth it. At the same time, all of this building at the front takes a lot of stone, so I'm going to start mining at the reserve at the back of the base. Although I do wish I could build walls out of barley and hay. I wanted a lot of these, but this might be too much. At least there'll be plenty of booze in the future. An escaped slave seeks refuge within our walls. Wallace enjoys a good meal and loves the process of harvesting and preparing textiles from flax plants and sheep alike. The man made quite a few into outfits himself so that he could afford exquisite meals in the cities. He even got quite decent at it before a horse bucked him in the face. The blow disfigured him and made it borderline impossible for him to actually appreciate the beautiful clothes he created. He still dreams of preparing the raw textiles for a genius tailor though, all while eating nice treats in the meantime. I think he and Willem are going to end up being good friends, assuming he likes apples. Clement's first great helm is done, but it's flimsy. The lowest possible quality. The others try to cheer up the downtrodden Clement, while Avoda starts working on a three-story condo for some private bedrooms on the other side of the map. William points out that no one could be expected to do a good job when making a new piece of gear they'd never seen before, and while Clement tries to smile, his eyes keep catching Theodric's. The next helmet, and the last one he makes before the raid arrives, is at least sturdy. It's passable for most myths, and is better than the previous one, but he thought he could do better. The earlier failures despite training all year made him feel angry, but now, he only wished he could feel angry about it. The raiders are here to reclaim Wallace, but we'll defend them. They're packing some serious heat in those crossbows. Willem takes two brutal shots, one to the leg and one to the head. It knocks him out cold. Theodric is starting to get injured too, so I try to have him drag Willem off to safety, but the man gets shot, prompting him to retaliate. It's fine, their last archer goes down, so it should be safe from now on. Although the very injured Theodric is so scared that he waddles off alone while leaving Willem and the other defenders to keep fighting. The angle makes it a little bit hard to see, but Herbert swapped his shield for an iron bird each, and is poking enemies through a grated door to help make them flee. It got a little touch and go with some of the villagers, but that's still a win. Just one that shows us why better armor is so important. Clement can't help but blame himself. 
Willem was in one of his helmets and nearly died from an arrow piercing the frail work. Theodric is fine now and not in any danger, but being close to death has made him reluctant to leave his room. The man continues convalescing well after anyone else would return to work. On the other hand, seeing his friends in danger has helped inspire Clement. The man still dreads what he feels like is almost certainly going to end in failure, but he's willing to try smithing armor once again, and his next result is good. That's some pretty heavy improvement, and is what I'll consider the first usable piece in the long term. But Clement doesn't want to congratulate himself or foster the ember of hope. He needs to make more and do better. The next one comes out fine, which is the best quality so far and is a massive improvement. This thing will reduce more than half the damage a colonist takes when crit. With that done, Clement finally allows himself a smile, and then it's back to work. He could still have done better than fine, and two passable helmets leaves at least six more to go even before he starts working on body armor. The front of the base gets some nice weapon racks to store gear for easy access. The first things that'll go there are some crossbows Bergwena is making. Even though Wenna is only in the low 20s, she delivers with a good quality crossbow right off the bat. Make that too. Armor racks are in, which I individually set up myself because I missed the copy paste button. Clement's doing a good job of making the armor racks look great with another fine helmet. The man's really starting to come into his own. We have so many of these that settlers are just leaving them on the ground in front of the mannequins. I mean, not actually, but they're just happy to litter. I also have so much food that berries are rotting in the fields before it can be hauled back to the cellar. I guess that's a good problem to have, though I could really use some more haulers. I'm honestly probably doing too much production at once. One researcher, one smith, one carpenter, one tailor, and one and a half botanist means that at least half my population is producing at any given time. I love how everyone knows when booze is ready after being deprived for even a short little bit. I also love to see the bedrooms coming along nicely. Good god, I think I went too hard on food. So many booze ingredients. The first six bedrooms are in, but I want at least ten before I move on. Excessive? Yes. There's no second part to this. The Society of Fellows is back, although thankfully without any trebuchets. Our armor preparation isn't nearly done, but most of the colonists will throw on a steel great helm at this point. Our archers are also going to upgrade from their weak short bows to the moderately stronger crossbows. Higher DPS, more armor pin, more range, but slower shots. That extra firepower helps us get rid of all their archers without any issues, at which point it only takes us a few hours to finish everyone else off. Avoda is still building bedrooms, but our mining efforts can focus on hollowing out the area near our kitchen for a booze cellar. The herb garden can also get an upgrade. Wallace joins in, sorta. He was already stout and had an iron stomach. That, plus Willem's excellent meals, has made the man into a gobbler. That means he's gonna eat a full meal in two quick bites. If you notice any visual changes to paths or buildings, it's because I spend some of the downtime playing with the aesthetics to clean the base up. Walls get a little less monotony, and paths become paths instead of just aimless bricks. It takes a while, so I'm not going to show it all, but you do get to reap the rewards of seeing what it looks like after it's all done. All while Avoda starts putting in the final rooms for now. Ooh, there's so many apples. Is it weird that I get a little happy thinking about Willem being happy to see this in the morning? Oh, we can't hold him to safety yet though. Let's go ahead and update the cellar so that it can store something beyond just red currants and barley. A captive managed to escape his slavers and flee to us. Again. Cedric is an amazing colonist. Brawny, Erudite, and Green Thumb are all some of the best perks in the game. Fantastic Doctor, Fighter, and Miner. The latter is more nature than nurture, but he picked up a trick or two while doctoring in a traveling circus slash wrestling act he was a natural in. The man's vivacious and has no real long-term goal besides trying to make every day a good one for both himself and anyone fortunate enough to call him a friend. I'll go ahead and make my base a little bit more OSHA compliant. I'll also get some proper healthcare going on with an apothecary's bench where we can make healing kits. Right now, we treat our settlers with a smile and some basil, and Theodric doesn't even give his patients a smile. Distilleries that we eventually unlock will let us make disinfectant to make advanced healing kits, but for now, we'll go with normal ones. Our miners also have a lot of work to do now, first on the booze cellar, and then on the mystery building. The raiders arrive, and after gearing up at the front, I send the archers to the side of the base to take some pot shots on their approach. Two raiders go down, but I don't have any cover here, so I retreat from a fairly fair fight versus their archers. The roads let everyone rush back into place before the enemies get there. While Cedric's got a great longsword in his hands and a grated door between him and his enemies, he slays a good few. But once that door goes down, the man refuses to retreat back. Instead, he gets jumped on and knocked out in short order. Herbert rushes to defend his passed out body from the raiders. Herbert's confidence convinces the slavers to flee. Cedric tries to say the massive wounds are no big deal and even tries to go about his day like normal. 
but the man passes out from blood loss before he gets far. Herbert patches him up, although he isn't sure whether to admire Cedric's bravery or wonder how someone so foolhardy is still alive. The raid slowed down food production for a little bit, but people are starving and Willem is just chilling. He's taking his time grabbing one cabbage on each trip on his way to cook. With the new bedrooms finished, I go ahead and deconstruct the tiny little rooms at the front of the base that they were using to make sure everyone goes to the nicer rooms. The food issues actually lead to the first rebellion of the series. That starving debuff is understandably no joke for the voracious Wallace. The mystery building gets a proper wall made of expensive limestone bricks. This building needs to look good, especially now that we've got a brand new goat on the map. It's wild, fairly old, and alone, which are all very unfortunate, but it is at least one fluffy goat, so that's something. I'll go ahead and send Willem out to train and hopefully rope this animal back to our pen. In way less eventful news, a raid hits but is easily fended off. I think we'll be fine for a while, at least until trebuchets start showing up again or until I let this overconfidence ruin me. The big mystery building is almost done, so I'll go ahead and put the rest of my stone towards the fences at the front. That starts with the second wall here. I have something in mind that'll do a good job, although I don't know how nice it'll look, so I might change this up after finishing it. The far side of that wall at the front gate gets some stairs and a floor across for easy access to the research towers and tree farm when it's finally fortified. I should honestly just move these into the base at this point, but that is a nice place for a library and it's been there for a while, so I think it'll stay until it's impractical to keep it there. Or past that, knowing me. This will still take more cut stone, so I'll keep building the booze cellar for now while that gets processed. I'll also start the first actual anything going inside the mystery building. A bit of a platform. Okay, I know, I know. I just want to make sure everything's ready before I start filling it out. The boo cellar also gets some innards in the form of a row of torches. These are going to act like a thermostat, but I'll show that once they're all in. Avoda gets trapped while building inside the big building. Ah, callbacks. Ooh, the goat's tame. Let's make it so that the goat can be kept in the fairly empty cow pen and get it trained. I wonder how long these live. I really hope it's a while. Some help hauling would be really useful, and now if I get a male goat, they can start making offspring. The torches in the boost cellar are done, although these aren't quite enough for the dead of winter. I need this room to be at least 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so some heavy duty braziers go in. These each produce 13 torches worth of heat, and one alone is enough to get the place over 40 degrees in the middle of winter. After moving the fermenting fruit juice over, I can regulate the temperature inside by choosing how many of these are on at any given time. That'll ensure that everything's at the perfect temperature to ferment. Armor is coming along well, we're about to have enough good helmets for everyone, although we still need lots of body armor. The front walls and mystery building have both made a lot of progress, although there's still actual meat to finish up at each of them. All that, plus more advanced booze production using our new cellar and spirit distillery, as well as potentially more animals await in the next episode. Hopefully you'll join me for that.